A shocking crime, an expecting mother and her two children killed, a fetus cut from her womb. Tonight we uncover new information surrounding the Deborah Evans murder case. Tomorrow in DuPage County, a lawyer for one of the men convicted of the crime plans to call for a hearing to review testimony from two potential witnesses. NBC 5's Marion Brooks has exclusive details. The two witnesses say they were in contact with police and prosecutors several times. Prosecutors are skeptical about their stories, but attorneys for two of the men convicted in the crimes want to hear the stories in court. It is the kind of case that haunts. I can't live like this anymore. This woman, who we'll call Susan, had information about the Evans case that has I always disturbed her. Nothing. If it just gets all explained away, there's seriously something f wrong with the system. In November of 1995, Deborah Evans was shot in the head and killed. Her full-term fetus cut from her womb, the child would survive. Her 10-year-old daughter, Samantha, stabbed to death. Her 7-year-old son, Joshua, kidnapped and then killed several hours later. So what exactly did Vicki tell you about Joshua? That he was there in the apartment that night. The Vicki she's talking about is Vicki Iaculo. A woman charged in the Evans case, but not with murder. The Joshua is Joshua Evans. Iaculo's charges stem from what police reports reveal about her involvement the night of the murders. The records show she was sold and disposed of the gun used to kill Deborah Evans. The police records also show she asked a friend about fictitious birth certificates days prior to the murders, and that she made the fake birth certificate used in the case. And records also contain statements from three witnesses who say the day after the murders, Vicki said she'd been in a gunfight and wanted to know how to get gunpowder burns off of her hands. Ayakulo was ultimately charged with obstructing justice and a weapons violation. The evidence, if you just look at what's in police discovery, seems to point to more than obstruction of justice. Well, she was uh, definitely intimately involved in this and was charged with certain offenses, and we made the decisions based on the evidence. But not only did Susan have information about Ayakulo, Susan says Ayakulo's four-year-old daughter also made some statements to Susan in the months after the murders. She was with Vicki and Joshua, and she saw the lady bloody on a floor. This man is the four-year-old's father. He says he heard a similar story from the little girl. And she brought up about being in the uh, apartment with her mother at that time and um, seeing a body that was covered up on the floor. In police reports, Ayakulo has denied any involvement in the murders, and she's also refused our request for comment. Susan says she told police and prosecutors about this years ago. They just said that I never told them anything that they didn't already know, so it wasn't important. Prosecutor John Kinsella acknowledges his office met with Susan, the father, and the little girl, but denies they were told anything significant, saying, to my knowledge, this woman at no time ever made mention of these admissions to any policeman and prosecutor associated with the case, and that investigators had theorized that Joshua might have been taken to the apartment in question prior to this murder, and they aggressively pursued this theory. Let them say whatever f they want. I know what I told them. Regardless of the past, within days after we told prosecutors what Susan and the father told us, Addison police detectives returned to interview them again. The detectives declined comment. Now attorneys for two of the three people convicted of the crime, Fidel Caffey and Laverne Ward, want to hear Susan's story in court. I think the potential to Laverne Ward uh, could mean a new trial. And if this pans out, uh, it certainly is real serious. The father of the four-year-old is still involved in a custody battle with Vicki Iaculo, and prosecutors tell us they have Susan on tape saying that she didn't tell us the truth. But despite those credibility issues, both attorneys for the men in prison want a judge to determine what the truth really is. Back to you. Thanks, Mary.